I have a word in my spirit tonight that I want to share with you and is found in St. John, the third chapter and the eighth verse, and turn to Acts, the second chapter, the first and the second verses, and uh, read the word. The wind bloweth where it listeth. The wind bloweth where it listeth. And thou hearest the sound thereof. And you hear the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh. But you cannot tell whence it cometh or where it comes from. And whither it goeth. And you cannot tell where it goes. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit of God. Read Acts, Acts 2, beginning with verse 1. Yes. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all with one accord in one place. They were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. All of a sudden there came a sound from heaven. As of a rushing mighty wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. I want to talk to you tonight for a few minutes from this subject. There is something in the wind. There is something in the wind. Now, uh, this subject was born out of a conversation that Jesus had with Nicodemus, one of the rulers of Israel. Uh, Jesus uh, had conversation with him and he was talking uh, about uh, the different types of winds. Now those of you that know about the wind, why the Bible talks about a great wind. It talks about a hurricane. It talks about a tornado. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. It talks about a cyclone. But tonight, I did not come here to talk to you about a natural wind. Mm -hmm. I come to talk about the wind of the spirit. I come to talk about a spiritual wind. And you all are going to talk to me in this place. Jesus, uh, at this time, was on his mercy mission. And uh, uh, the Bible said that as Jesus was in the ministry, doing his ministry, there was a man named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, had heard about Jesus. Now, I want to tell you all, there is something uh, uh, that I want to say about you. I never could preach unless I use my holy imagination. And I can just imagine in my mind that Jesus was doing some mighty things uh, uh, in his days here on earth. And... uh, The Bible said that this man, Nicodemus, was interested in the master. 
he did some things that he had never heard of before. And this particular day, uh, Jesus, uh, there was a man at the pool of Bethesda. He had been there for 38 years. And Jesus came to that pool. The Bible said there came a time when the angels would come down and would trouble the waters, would stir the waters. And the first one that stepped in after the water was troubled was healed of whatever disease he had. But one day Jesus walked down to that pool and there's a man that hadn't walked in 38 years. Jesus walks up to him and asks him a significant question. He asked him, said, will thou be made whole? And the man looked up to Jesus and he went to telling the master, I've been here for 38 years. I've been trying to get in this pool and every time I try to get in this pool, just as I get there, somebody stepped down before me. And I can hear Jesus when he listened at him real good. Say, uh-huh, I understand all of that, but I'm asking you a significant question. Do you want to get well? Do you want to be made whole? And the man said, yes. Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. And just about that time, I saw the power of God struck him. And his legs and ankle bones started jumping and popping in place. And he jumped up and went to running and leaping and praising God. And not only that, I saw the servant go back to, uh, uh, went back to Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, what did he do today? Said, it's like I told you, he healed that man at the pool. He said, well, go back and watch him tomorrow and come back and bring me word. And uh, the next day, he went down and there was a blind man he didn't see, couldn't see. And when Jesus met him, the Bible said, Jesus spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes and told him to go wash in the pool of Siloam. And he went to the pool and washed his eyes, washed the mud off his eyes, and his eyes came open. And he was seeing 2020. Man, he went back to Nicodemus and said, what did he do today? He said, Nicodemus, so he opened blinded eyes today. He said, what? He said, oh, that blind man saw. He said, go back and watch it tomorrow and come back and bring me word. Went back the next day and uh, uh, Jesus came along and there were 10 men who were lepers. Man, they were white as snow. And they got together, so let's call Jesus and ask him to let's, uh, let him cleanse us from this leprosy. And they all got together and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And Jesus said to the ten lepers, go show yourself to the priest. They took Jesus at his word. And they were on their way to Jerusalem to show themselves to the priest. And the Bible said, and they were healed as they went. But one of those fellows, when he saw that he was healed, and he saw that his skin had turned back to its natural color, he said, I got to go back. And I got to thank the master for what he'd done for me. He went where Jesus was and fell down on his face and said, Lord, I thank you for healing me. I thank you for delivering me. Jesus said, wasn't there 10 of you? 
Now I can hear this fellow in the imagination of my mind saying, uh, I don't know where that nine is, but I've come back to thank you for myself. When the Lord says something, does something for you, you ought to thank him. Went back to Nicodemus. What did he do? He said, Nicodemus, you ain't going to believe this. He cleaned 10 lepers today. Said what? He cleaned 10 lepers today. Said, I'll tell you what, you're going to see what he does tomorrow. Next day, he went where Jesus was, and there was a widow's son had died. And they was taking him to the cemetery. And uh, as they was on their way to the cemetery, the Bible said Jesus came and broke up the, the funeral set. He touched the beer, touched the bier, touched the casket, and the men stood still. And Jesus said to the young dead man, said, Arise! And the young man's eyes came open, and he sat up, and Jesus restored the boy to his mother. They went back to Nicodemus. Nicodemus said, what did they do today? He said, Jesus, he raised the dead today. He said, what? I'm telling you, they was on their way to the cemetery. With this young man had died and Jesus raised him from the dead. Jesus said, I'll tell you what you do. That's enough. You go find out where Jesus is preaching tonight and come back and bring me word. Man, uh, he went around and he sought around and he found out where Jesus was preaching that day. He said, uh, He's preaching over on such and such a street. And right. uh, Nicodemus said, thank you. And he waited until the sun went down. Right. And when the sun went down, uh, he made his way to that house. Right. Now, some of y'all may criticize Nicodemus for going uh, there by night to see Jesus. But whether you find Jesus morning, noon, or night, as long as you find him, everything is all right. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. All of us didn't find him at the same time anyway. But one thing I can say about Nicodemus, he found Jesus. And when he found Jesus, when he got there, uh, when he knocked on the door, he said, yes, I'm looking for Jesus. And there he is right there. He went over where Jesus was and said, Master, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do except God be with him. Jesus said unto him, Nicodemus. Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. I hear Nicodemus said, born again? He said, how can a man be born when he's old? Or can he, nature reverse itself? And he go back into his mother's womb and be born the second time? Jesus said, you being a master in Israel, and you don't know this? Nicodemus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. I'm telling you, the second birth is a spiritual birth. Not birth from your mother, but birth from on high. And said, now, I'm going to come to tell you now, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. I'm telling you now, this birth that I'm going to give you will be a spiritual birth from above. And praise God, and Nicodemus was spellbound. And what I come to tell you tonight 
if that prayer or that birth wasn't answered until after Jesus went back to heaven. Listen to Jesus talk. Jesus told his disciples after he rose from the dead, said, I want you all to go to Jerusalem and tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. When the Holy Ghost is come, you shall have power. The Bible said that he breathed on them and told them, receive the Holy Ghost. I saw the master when he stepped up on an airplane cloud and goes back to the glory world and sits on the right hand of God. The disciples went on to Jerusalem and they went to the upper room. And the Bible said they were praising and magnifying God. Three days passed and they waited. Six days passed and they waited. Nine days passed and they waited. But the Bible said on the tenth day, in about the third hour, I heard Jesus tell the Holy Ghost, said, get on the wind and get down yonder and fill the house and fill everything in the house. And the Bible said, and when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. I saw the Holy Ghost. When they left heaven like lightning, riding on the wings of the wind. And I heard the writer say that when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting. They appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And the Holy Ghost set upon each of them. And they spoke with other tongues and other languages as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. What I want to tell you tonight that same wind that blew on the day of Pentecost is blowing now. I want to tell you there's something in this wind. There's power in the wind of the Spirit. There's joy in the wind of the Spirit. Did you hear what I tell you? The wind of the Lord is blowing. Can't you feel the wind? Is anybody here tonight? Is anybody out there ever felt the wind of the spirit? The spiritual wind is blowing. It's blowing now. I feel it in my hands. I feel it in my feet. I feel it in my heart. I feel it in my soul. Somebody said it's all over me. It's keeping me alive. There's something in the wind. There's joy in the wind. There's power in the wind. There's anointing in the wind. Anybody here, anybody out there that ever felt the wind of the Spirit is blowing now. Can't you feel him blowing? Can't you feel him blowing? The wind blow where it listen. You hear the sound thereof. You cannot tell from whence it come or whence it goeth. When the Holy Ghost comes, uh, it makes a sound. Did you hear what I tell you? There's a sound in the spirit. There's a sound in the anointing. There's sound in God's power. There's a sound. When the Holy Ghost comes, uh, there's a sound. A sound of joy. Anybody here? Anybody here? They feel the joy? Somebody said I get joy when I think about what he done for me. There's joy in this place. Can't you feel the joy? 
Can't you feel the joy? Can you feel the joy? Clap your hands. Tell God, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Tell him, thank you. Oh, Lord. I get joy when I think about Glory to God. Come on, put your hands together and let's have a Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. We're going to ask you to rest upon your feet. Certainly on tonight, the man of God has preached out of the depths of his soul. How many of you know there's something in the wind? How many of you know that when you've got the Holy Ghost, you've got power? How many of you here tonight have the Holy Ghost power? Hallelujah to God. Come on and lift up your hands and open up your mouth. And let's begin to praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to his name tonight. Hallelujah to God. Certainly we thank the Lord for what he has done tonight. But thank him for his presence in this place. 
Certainly on tonight while we're standing, you've heard the word of the Lord. If there's one here tonight, you don't know this God that we're talking about. This is your opportunity to accept him as your personal savior. After hearing the word of the Lord tonight, maybe you say, preacher, I am saved. But maybe you haven't received this gift of the Holy Ghost that we're shouting about. If you're here tonight, we're going to ask you to come. Whatever you need prayer for on tonight, the altar is open. The ministers are here. And certainly we will pray along with you. If you need prayer tonight, anyone, whatever you need prayer for. How many of you know that God has given us power? Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah to God. Anyone else tonight? <clears throat> whatever you may need prayer for. Hallelujah to God. Whatever you need tonight, I want you to know that God is able to meet that need. I don't care what it is. There's nothing impossible with the Lord tonight. Hallelujah to God. We've got power because we have him on the inside. And greater is he that is in us. Hallelujah to God than he that is in the world. Whatever you may need tonight, we're going to extend the invitation to you that you have an opportunity now to come. The ministers are coming down to minister to you as we pray. Whatever you need, we are asking you to get it in your mind tonight. We want you to simply have faith in God and believe that whatever you're asking him for, that certainly he's able to do it tonight. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for the men of God and the vessel that you use. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your Holy Ghost power. We know that there's something in the wind tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask you tonight to move by your power divine. Meet the needs of those that are on the altar tonight. Let your Holy Ghost power, God, meet their every need tonight. Touch them right now from the crown of their head to the very sole of their feet, God. You are able to do anything tonight. There's nothing that's impossible with you. God, whatever they are standing in the need of, for whatever need they have come to this altar, God, we know that you're able to meet their need. In the name of Jesus, we ask you to renew their strength tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus, manifest yourself to them. Show them your glory tonight. In the name of Jesus, God, we ask you to have your way tonight around this altar. We ask you to continue to bless this ministry. Remember our men of God tonight. Give him strength in his body. In the name of Jesus, let restoration come, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, continue to move in this place. Continue to move on this broadcast. Continue to have your way, God. And God, we thank you tonight. We're going to magnify and praise your name. We're going to bless you for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ha, oh, have your way, have your way, have your way. God, we thank you tonight. Thank you for what you've already done. Thank you for how you're going to do even more. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on, put your hands together and let's tell them thank you. Put your hands together and tell them thank you.